Hey guys, it's Chad. Welcome back to Griffith Woodworking. Hey, I've really enjoyed my new workbench that I created recently. Uh, if you haven't seen the video of all the details about that, it was my last video, go ahead and click on that. Check it out. I go over all the things I've built, including my table saw and my router. I've used the table saw quite a few times and it's really, really great with all this extra space and it's just, it's been great. Uh, the other day, I needed to use my miter saw and it's stored under here. So I can easily, with this new workbench and storage, I can just grab it, pull it out, and put it on top here, and just use it however I usually do. But one thing I don't like about miter saws like this is it sits up off the table. And so sometimes if you're using long pieces of wood, you have to put something down at the end or right here at the top, just so it doesn't bow off and just so it stays level on the top here. And also another thing that I, I was a little bit annoyed with is having to pull this in and out every single time. So I came up with a plan to solve both problems. I would like to have this miter saw sit down inside my workbench to where the top of the miter saw is at the top of the workbench, just like my table saw on my router. That way, if I'm using these long boards, I can spread it across the entire length of the table and it's level with this. So that was what I wanted to do. But I wanted this table to be able to be used when I'm not using my miter saw. So I came up with a plan to do a flip top miter saw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out a portion of my top here and mount my table saw down underneath at the exact elevation to where this is level with the top. But also, I'm gonna install a rod right through the middle underneath to where I can flip this, to where this will be then mounted on the underside and the top will just be the rest of the table. That way it'll all be level and it'll be as if this doesn't even exist. It'll be mounted on the bottom and then whenever I wanna use it, I can just flip it up and it'll be mounted on top at the exact level of the table. So one of the more important things for this project for me is to make sure that when the miter saw is flipped and mounted underneath, that the top of the workbench stays nice and smooth and as if nothing is really there. You'll be able to see the cuts where we cut out the top so it'll be able to flip, but I still, I don't, I want it to be perfect. I don't want it to be able to get caught on anything when I'm moving pieces of wood around. So it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but I'm gonna to have to build underneath before I cut to make sure that the top of the table and the top of the bench is nice and smooth and the exact level that it would have been. So it's gonna be a little tough, but let's get it done. The first thing I need to do is cut and drill my pieces that are gonna be the outside and inside frame for the flipping mechanism. Each board needs to be cut 20 and a half inches long because that's going to be the depth of the flipping mechanism. Craig jig. I've got this already set up to go with my six inch boards, inch and a half wide. It's going to be attached to this melanie, which is three quarters inch wide. So I've got my drill and my Craig jig set up so I can use my two and a half inch pocket hole screws to go through and connect this on the underside of here before I make my cut. So I'll go ahead and make the, the drill. I've already got them marked on here where I need to cut. I'll go ahead and get them on. And I got to do this on all four of these boards. I'm going to use three pocket screws for each of these to connect nice and secure on the underside. So I'll drill three holes in each. All done. 
So the bar I'm gonna be using for this thing to flip around is this solid 5 8 inch, three foot long steel bar. Now I don't wanna just put this in the wood because I'm afraid the wood's gonna maybe deform a little bit over time, which will create a little bit of slack. And then the top of the table where I want it to be nice and, nice and flush, it might sink down a little bit after a while. So in order for this not to be sitting right in the wood, in the holes, and get that deformation. What I decided to do is use this hollow three quarter inch aluminum bar. Now I'm not gonna use this whole thing. I'm just gonna use about this much on each corner. And then this bar will slide right in. And that way you'll have this in the wood and then this in the, in the hollow part. That way it's more of like a casing. That way when this rotates like it should whenever you're twisting it or flipping it I should say uh, you won't get any deformation on the wood because the wood's a lot softer obviously than the metal so I'll cut this later to the right size for the casing will go through the wood and then this will go through the casing so in order to make this work I need to drill through the wood a three-quarter inch hole because the outside diameter of this is three quarter inch, obviously. So to make sure that I drill it in the right place for when it's underneath on the bottom, I need to line up these sides. I've already have it marked. This is gonna be the top and this is gonna be the inside and it needs to be lined up on this and this because when it sits up underneath here, if you can kind of view it, it's gonna be up against the bottom and out against the edge. So I need to make sure this is flush and this is flush. That way my hole will be exactly where it needs to be. So in order to do that, I'm gonna lay it flat on here. That way I know the edge I need flush is flush. I don't need to worry about this side. And then also I need to make sure this side's flush. So I'm gonna use a board I have, put it here, make sure it's 90 degrees. Let me grab my square. So I got my square, so I'll make sure that this is going to be square and flush on the edge. Now when I have it right where I need it to be, I'm going to use these clamps to clamp it together in a couple spots. Whoops. That way I know it's exactly the spot it needs to be. Nice and square. Now the next step is to clamp it down and drill the hole. So I've got my two boards that I need to drill the three quarter inch hole in already clamped together and clamped to my table here to drill. Now if you have a drill press, right now is the time to use it. I don't have a drill press, so I'm gonna have to do the best I can right here with just my regular drill. This needs to be straight through uh, because that way when I put my three quarter inch aluminum casing in here, if it's off a little bit, then the bar will not be able to go through. If it's off up and down or side to side, I need it to be straight through this board. So I'm gonna do the best I can. I wish I had a drill press. Unfortunately, I don't have one. So. I've already got my board marked where it needs to be, which according to my, the plans I drew up is nine and a half inches from the front here and then two and a half inches from the top. This will be the section that's attached to the top. So two, actually two and three quarters inch down and nine and a half, nine and a half inches over. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drill my holes through both of the boards and hopefully I do do really well and keep it straight up and down. might be I'm off by about a quarter of an inch which isn't good I might have to redo this and that's why you need a drill press I'm gonna have to redo this I won't bore you with the details but I'm gonna redo it now that I have my pocket holes drilled I put my screws already seated in the pocket holes right to the edge that way this is a little bit less uh, screw and I have to do to get that in there and I've already got my holes drilled for 
the bar that will hold the whole thing together. Um, as you can see, I kind of messed up, drilled in the wrong place, so I had to flip it around and do it in the right place. So ignore this hole. That was just a mistake. So we're going to line this up on the marks that we have because we need to get this as straight as we can be. I already have my glue set on the top, and I'm going to try to get this middle one set. So I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to push it up. Go. Wrong way. the middle one set and now we can move this to make sure it goes right on the line perfect now we got that set right on the line I can screw this one in this one in and this one in let's go for it all right that's in there pretty good all right now that we got this first piece in, I need to install the second piece. It's going to go right here. It's going to be the brace for the table part of the, spin, the uh, flip top. Uh, in order to make sure I have this cut exactly where I need to be, I went ahead I cut this little tiny four inch piece of the three quarter inch hollow. So I'll stick it through here, through this hole. Make sure I do the right one. There we go. And then this is what I'm going to use as a spacer. It's just a three quarter inch center washer. So that's just going to be a spacer between the two parts that are going to flip beside each other. So now I'll go ahead and put this up where it's supposed to be. Grab my hammer here. come back out after we had to get it all screwed in together here it should it should come out just fine all right so we got it in spot in the place where it needs to be so now it's time to screw it in where it needs to go two sides. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. 